Hi everyone and welcome to my next video tutorial which is going to be focused on creating charts by utilizing Django admin. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I have is a simple Django project so you just need to have a Django project up and running so this is a prerequisite for this tutorial. So as you can see all I've done is I've created a virtual environment and created a simple Django project and as you can see here in my migrations here that all I need to do is I just need to make the base migrations here so the admin or content type sessions so I'm just going to do those default migrations here so I'm just going to say python manage.py migrate Okay, so this is just the uh, very basic. So make sure that you have your Django project up and running and that you've made all of the default migrations for the default installed apps. Now, of course, these installed apps will pertain to what you have set up here in installed apps. So just make sure that you migrate all those default database files that pertain to these apps. All right, so that's what you need to do to get started. So if you haven't got a Django project, go ahead and create one, set up your virtual environment, set up Django, make all the default migrations like I've done here. And that's what you need to do first of all before um, you can continue with this tutorial. So make sure you've got that all set up and ready to go. And as you can see here, I have the default Django page up and available. All right. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is install this package known as Django Admin Charts, which is going to allow us to visualize any data that we want to um, set up in terms of various constraints or metrics. So we want to utilize this package. So we can say pip install Django Admin Charts. And you can go ahead and install that within your virtual environment of your project. All right. So it's going to take quite a while to install it. So you just need to wait a little bit. Right, and the next thing that we want to install is Django Lite. Okay, so this is just a package that's going to force us to use light mode. And the reason that we need to use light mode is because in dark mode, what happens is all of the data that you see with Django admin charts. So here, for example, you can see data. It's shown in a better and clearer way if you are using light mode with Django. Now, of course, if you're using Django 4.2, you'll automatically have the option to enable a light mode. So I'm just going th through this with you guys if you're struggling to um, set that all up accordingly. So as you can see here, it's going to look a lot cleaner and a lot better if you implement it this way. Okay, so we also have light mode. So you can go ahead and install that. So pip install Django light. And there we go. So make sure you've installed the two packages here. So Django admin charts and Django Lite. I will be sure to, as always, um, attach th these uh, links in the description below. Right, so let's continue with Django admin charts. So the next thing that you're going to have to do if we scroll down is we need to set everything up in terms of the installed app. So I'm just going to zoom in here. So we need to add in the following installed apps. So admin tool stats and Django underscore NVD3. And these need to be before the Django contrib admin um, installed app. So this is going to override it. So I'm going to just copy that. The first one, I'm going to do it one by one. Head on to settings.py. So we can go to installed apps here. And add that in. Next, you can just add in Django underscore NVD3, like so, and add that. And just make sure it's just above the Django contrib admin. So as we can see here, it's just um, above it. Great, the next thing that we need to do is we need to add in and register the chart view in our default urls.py file. So what we can do is head on to our urls.py file. Okay, so here's the default. So I just wanna remove these comments. And we want to ensure that we utilize the include function. So that's going to be imported from django.urls along with pass. And that's going to allow us to utilize this chart view here. And you can see it's right here. So you can just copy that as is. Just make sure that you paste it in and that you have uh, added in the include function or else you won't be able to use this custom view for this package. All right, so make sure you've added that in. All right, so we've got that set up in our settings. Now, of course, um, with Django Lite here, okay, just to force everything accordingly, you can just add in this Django Lite to installed apps. And you, I'm just gonna put it right here at the top. And you can just add in the comma there. All right, so the next thing you wanna do now is you wanna go ahead and say Python manage.py migrate. 
Okay, and there we go, everything's been migrated, perfect. Now what we can do for the moment, just run your server. And I just want us to head onto the admin page. Okay, and we can head on straight there. So we can say forward slash admin. And there we go, it forces that um, light seam. Now, like I said, with Django 4.2, you're going to have the option to go ahead and change the seams with an option here. That's on the toggle. But for those of you um, that are using, for example, Django 4, Django 4.1 and lower, this is going to help you a lot. But of course, if you're on Django 4.2 and up, you don't really need to add it. You can just toggle the coloring here by default with Django. So something I just wanted to mention. So I just wanted to cater to everyone. But like I said, with Django Lite, you don't really need this with Django 4.2. You can use it if you want to follow for continuity in this video, but you don't actually need to add it. But for other versions, it would be best to add it just to ensure that you have that seam set up. Okay, so I just want to zoom in here a bit. All right, so now we need to create a super user, of course. So what I'm going to do is stop my server and say Python manage .py create super user. Okay, and we'll leave on the default. So say oh no, email skip, enter in a password. And again, Great, and what we can do now is just say Python manage.py run server. Okay, great, head on over to your admin page, just refresh. And what you can do now is just go ahead and enter in your super user credentials and proceed to log in. Right, so once you've entered in your credentials, you can go ahead and log in. All right, and as you can see now, we have this app here, which is admin underscore tool stats. We have uh, the following models, so cached uh, values, dashboard stats, and dashboard stats criteria. Now, it does get quite advanced, but I want to keep it as simple as, as possible since this is the introduction into Django admin charts. Now, of course, you can also read here in the documentation a little bit more about the various configurations that you can add in and how you can add in extra properties such as configuring the JavaScript libraries and anything else that you can go ahead and set up. Now, just to keep it simple for now, just to get a normal chart up and running here, what we want to do is we want to click on dashboard stats. And we want to say add dashboard stats or stats. Okay, and here we need to enter in some information. So we would need to, first of all, enter in a graph identifier. So this, of course, needs to uh, be one word that is unique. Okay, so this is just going to be the name of your graph. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this my graph. Right, next you need to enter in a title. Okay, so this is going to be the heading title of your graph uh, box here. So I'm just going to set this as total number of users because what we want to do is we want to calculate, we want to have a graph that shows the total number of users that are registered with our application as an example for demonstrating a particular metric. Then you want to enter in an app name. So the app name here I'm going to use is going to be Auth since that's going to be based on authentication and authorization. So if we go to settings.py here, we can see we have django.contrib.auth and this is what I'm going to be basing um, everything on. So based on the auth app. So I'm going to say auth. Model name. So I want to base it on the user model, the default user model for Django, because I want to calculate the total number of users that I have in my application. And I also want to view that graphically with a chart. So I'm going to put in user. Then you can add in a date field name. So by default with the user model, there is a attribute or field known as date joined. Okay, so this is all going to correlate with the default um, user model from the auth app of Django. Right, then you can go ahead and set up an, uh, an operate field name. So the field that you want to aggregate. So what I mean by that is the field that you want to perform the various operations upon. If you want to count, get the sum, the max, the min, the variance of that particular um, in, you could say of that particular field in that particular model. So the field here, I want it to be based on is username. So I know the username is a field or attribute part of user. So for each object you create with the user model, okay, you need to enter in each time a username, a first name, a last name for each object. So I want to count the total number of users, okay? And a good way to do that is to count it based on the number of usernames in my um in my application. 
So that is how you can go ahead. So whatever you want to perform your calculations against, you would put it here as the operate field name. Okay, you can leave everything else here on the default and you want to choose the type of operation. So in my case, I want to say count and the type operation here, I want to say count. So I just want to match it here accordingly. So I want to count all of the usernames in my application. Uh, and this is essentially the same thing as counting all the users in that are registered to my website. So we're going to say count. Now here you can select all the allowed um, chart types that you want to use. So it's a little bit crazy here. So I want to uncheck most of them except bar and line. I'm going to keep that, but everything else it's, it's overkill, I think. Okay, and we can choose a default chart type. So what do you want to see the first time? So a bar chart or a line chart, you can decide. Then you want to see the allowed time scale. So here you want to see essentially the time scale in terms of hours, months, days, quarters, weeks, and years. So that's something that you can also set up accordingly. Then of course we have the default time scale and days, the default period. So these are just things you can go ahead and play around and see how you feel. And of course you can also add in the Y axis format as well. That's something else you can also add into place. So what we can do is leave it as is. We want to ensure that this um, option here is checked for visible so that we'll be able to view our um, chart. Everything else you can leave as is. Just make sure you filled everything here accordingly. So the graph identifier, graph title, app name, model name, date field name, the operate um, field name. You can leave the rest here on the default. Choose the type of operation that you want to perform. So ours is going to be based on count. I want to count the number of users and allow chart types, I'm restricting it, restricting it explicitly for bar and line ch charts. And as you can see, there are the default set. Now, if you're happy with everything, just scroll down and save this. Okay, so essentially you've gone ahead and created a graph, you could say, of sorts. And now what you can do is go to home. And if you scroll down, you can now see you have a graph here. And of course you can see it is a bar chart, should I say, and we have one user and we can see that here on the left that we have one user and that is on Monday. So it's Monday for me, you can see the dates here. So one user on Monday. Now that is, if we head on to users here, we can see we have one user and that's our super user. So let's add in some more users just to test this. So I'm going to say test one. Uh, let's put in a password. Confirm it. Save. Great. Okay, that's fine. Let's go to users again. Okay, so we have two users now. Let's go to add user. Chest two. Okay, enter in everything there. Save. Go to users, and now we can see we have three users. So technically, if we go to our homepage, scroll down, we can now see in this chart here, okay, on Monday, I created three users, and we can see that correlates right there. And as we can see here, we have the total number of users. Now let's switch this up to a line graph here. And as you can see here, we can see now, okay, 28th of uh, August here, okay, I have three users that are set accordingly, as we can see here by the heading. You can further click on the analytics, and this is going to show it a little bit better, a bit, well, not necessary, but better. So let's go back. So sometimes you just need to play around with some of the settings and just adjust it accordingly. Now, the best way to actually see it is on the home page here of Django Admin. It looks a little bit clearer here, I would say. And yeah, a bar chart looks pretty decent here. You just need to adjust it accordingly with what you want to see and view. Okay, so that is how you can go ahead and set everything up. Now, of course, we do have dashboard stats criteria where you can add in various uh, bits of criteria here and you can fix it, fix it according to values or enter in uh, dynamic values and add it into place here with some JSON options. You can also go ahead and cache your values as well, which is a little bit advanced. I'm not going to so much detail here, or you can cache your values and set them up and restrict them to various pieces of data of that pertain to your chart. All right, guys, so that's it. So as you can see here, everything's returned to normal. So sometimes you just need to refresh the page here just to clean it up a little bit. Okay, 
So that's it guys for this uh, video tutorial. So I just wanted to show you how you can add in charts here. So as you can see, this could be um, very useful to you in certain lights, all depending on what you want to do and what you want to set into place. Now there's a lot more that you can do with this package. We're just going through the tip of the iceberg here. There's a lot more things that you can do, but at least it's something that I feel could be useful to you if you want to measure your data, track certain things and go on from there, of course. All right, guys, so that's it on this video. And as always, thank you for the support and I'll see you next time.